Hey guys, welcome back. By the end of this video, you'll know how to hook up powered monitors to the Model 12, how to get sound from those monitors, how the main meter on the Model 12 works, and as a bonus, how to get sound from the headphones. If you're curious about any of the gear I'm using in this video, it's linked in the description below. For the monitors, I'm just using standard XLR cables. I have a black one for the left speaker, and over here, there's a red one for the right speaker. You don't have to get specifically colored cables, but since that's standard for a lot of different cables, you know, red and black, I figured sometimes when you're just troubleshooting issues, having just two of any different type of cables, just it'll make it a lot clearer so you know which signal is going to which speaker. So a lot of these powered speakers have a level knob on them. And for the Model 12, I found that having it on min is the best position, especially if you want to use the meter accurately on the Model 12. And we'll talk about that a little bit deeper into this video. You might need to experiment with your setup and your monitors and see what works best for you. Aside from the XLR cables for each speaker, we also need to obviously plug them in with the power cables. And I would recommend plugging them all into the same power strip, your speakers and the Model 12. This will lessen any sort of electrical noise that the speakers or the setup might pick up having them all plugged into the same outlet. There's also these other settings on these speakers, room control, high trim. I've always left them at zero. You can look, there's EQ curves. Maybe your speakers have these and it says there's, it gives it a 500 decibel bump or cut and the high trim at two kilohertz, you can bump it or cut it. I've always left these flat or what I assume to be flat at zero. Here is the main output of the Model 12. We have XLR uh, male, and this is where I was saying the colors of the cables are useful. So here's the red cable, we know that that's the right side. And here's the black cable, and we know that that is the left side. And now our monitors are hooked up. Okay, so I turned down the Model 12, I turned on the monitors, and I would say if you wanna follow along with this part of the tutorial, make sure the channel one gain knob is all the way down these buttons are out. Um, we're gonna switch these over to live initially. Um, you, these doesn't really matter. Um, this one, we'll keep them at zero for now. And make sure your main is all the way down at this point. FX could be up, these don't really make too much of a difference. But when we're starting out, just make sure that this light right here, I'll turn it on. See how this is on right now? Make sure that this light is not on. So these two switches, if they're depressed, will turn it on. This AFL switch here and these solo switches. If you have any of those plugged in and you notice that light is on, check those switches. Essentially make sure that all of your switches, here I'll make all these uh, not depressed. Make sure all your switches are out. So I have this uh, Behringer CT100, something I've talked about in the past. It's just, we're gonna use this to pass a test tone into the Model 12. So this is simulating, if you had a guitar, something along those lines, drums. Say you wanted to set this up for drums. So let's see how to get some audio out of the Model 12. So the first thing I'd recommend to do, uh, use your menu button if you're on this screen you want to get to the meter, so M-E-T-R, let's press that. And so there's three different meter screens. There's the live input, which is what we want right now. PC return, which is if you're hooking this up to an interface. And MTR return, multi-track recording return. We're going to use that after we've recorded. So first up, make sure you're on live input. One of the biggest culprits for not having sound is not having the mode switch on the right position. And by right, I mean right for the mode that you want to use it for. So if you're recording live, make sure all these switches right now are on live. Okay, so let's pump the test tone through the Model 12 and see if we can get any audio. I've turned the main fader all the way up. Make sure the main fader is not muted. I have the channel one slider all the way up. And now I'm going to turn on the test tone. Oops, there we go. So let's see if we can get the signal. With the gain knob we usually use for fine adjusting the level of the signal. You can see that green signal light has come on, but and we can see on the live input that we do have a 
signal coming through, but I don't hear anything. What's the deal? Okay, so at this point, we may we have the live switch in the right position. Uh, the fader's up, the main fader's up. We see that there's a signal, but we don't hear it. The main thing with this Model 12 is that on each one of these channels, there are these three switches. You have main, sub, and solo. If you want to hear anything through these faders, you have to make sure that these buttons are depressed. So I'm going to turn this down because the test tone is a little grating. So let's press main and see what happens. Now that, what you hear in the background is the test tone. And you can see it's coming through the meter there, the main meter. Cool. So we got sound. So again, to reiterate, make sure that anytime you want to hear the sound on these through the main fader, main has to be all the way up because if we turn this down and press this button, we don't hear anything. We bring this up, we hear it. So it, all this audio gets summed to this fader. Now, another important thing is if you don't have the channel fader up, even as hot as we make the game, we don't hear anything. So the next thing to make sure is you have this up around zero for when you're recording and then use your gain knob to dial in. So right now there's a faint sound. Maybe you can't hear it, but so the gain knob here is kind of like the final adjustment. How loud do you want this coming in? And just a note, uh, let me turn this off. So I just turned the test tone off here. So, you know, you want to try to hit these as hard as you can without, you know, the more, the higher you make this knob, the more noise you may be introducing to the set, to the signal. So you want to get your sound to be pretty loud as it's coming into here and then use this gain knob as like a final adjustment for the level of the signal. All right, cool. So once again, just make sure once you have your monitors and you got to this stage and you're trying to do something live, make sure that the main buttons are all depressed. So go across your channels, push these all in. And now you should be able to hear audio through any of these channels, as long as you have this up, uh, these channels up and these switches on live and your gain is adjusted so that you have a signal coming through Let's look at just one quick thing about the main meter that can be confusing and that is And this is why I made a point to say make sure those lights are off. So if you have this light on the main meter is no longer Working right I just turned the test zone on when we turn this off we see the signal here on the meter. When, if I have a solo bus button depressed, AFL, these two AFL buttons depressed, then um, this meter is now for the solo bus, which is what we'll talk about next. But so I'm gonna turn the test zone off. So if you don't see the meter working, make sure that this light the pre-fade listen, after fade listen, make sure that that light is not on. Once it's off, you can see that we have the main meter working for the main bus. All right, so we have sound coming through the main monitors for live. Let's, uh, let's say that we have a song recorded, which I have on this um, project. So how do you play back now what you've recorded? And if you need help recording, I have a bunch of videos, two part series, and then a series on mixing or a video on mixing. I'll link them in the description and the cards. You can check those out. All right. So let's say you have something recorded and now you're not hearing the playback of what you recorded. So let's go back to, so the menu, I'm just going to skip this ahead to 10 seconds because I know that there's nothing in the beginning of this track. So let's go to MTR return. So that means multi-track recording return. And this is where we can now see the levels of our tracks that we recorded. So first, first things first, make sure your switches 
are all going to be, uh, your mode switches are all on MTR now. And as long as our main switches are still depressed down here, we should be good to go. Let me play the track. So it's the same exact idea. If we push these buttons in, notice how the drums are gone. So I'm just kind of trying to show that if you don't have these switches in the right position, you won't hear what you recorded. If you don't have if these main switches, if you're not bussing these signals to the main fader, you're not going to hear stuff. So these are effectively uh, working as mute. Which you also have a mute button here if you want to use that. All right, so the same concept again. If, as we did with the live recording, if you're not hearing what you recorded on playback, troubleshoot the same way. Make sure that, first of all, this is on MTR return so you can see that you actually have something recorded. And then make sure your switches are on MTR, main are depressed, main is up, faders are up, and this is you know where we would start mixing our song. I'm just going to turn these down. Um, I'll show you why in a second. Okay, so I hope that answers any questions you have about getting your monitors to work in the different modes. Just remember mode switch. Whichever mode you're on, if you're recording live, make sure you're on live. If you're trying to listen back, make sure you're on MTR. Okay, so a little bonus piece of content for this video is now you might say, well, that's all good and great, but I cannot, for the life of me, figure out how to get the headphones to work. Okay, so let's say you plugged your headphones in over here, and you just kind of are wondering, well, here's the phone's uh, level knobs. I should be able to just turn this up, right, and, and hear the phones, no problem. If only it were that simple. So we'll, we'll stay on MTR return and I'm going to uh, just turn the main fader down and see if we hear any audio through the headphones. So right now we're hearing nothing. If we turn this up, that's the sound through the monitors. But I have the phones knob up right now. I just turned it up and I'm not hearing anything. I have it blasting. No levels, no nothing. What is going on? So the phones, the headphones, are a separate bus and they are on this solo bus. So if you see down here you have these switches called solo. Now you might think that these switches based on the name are like in a DAW where you would press the button and you would just hear this channel soloed. Um, that's not really the case. In one way it is and in one way it's not. So that's not how it works for if you have the song playing on this. If we press this, it's not soloing. This, these are the drums, it's not soloing those. Oh, but that's weird. The main meter has gone off. So what is happening here? And if you remember before I said, if these, if this light is on, the main meter is no longer for the main fader. It's now the solo bus fader or the 
pre-fade listen, after fade listen. So now, in order to hear something through the headphones, similar to how we did for main, make sure that anything you want to hear through the headphones, the solo bus button is pressed. So just for main, how we had to have all these depressed, now we have to have all these solo buttons depressed. Because this is not soloing it in the sense of a DAW, it's sending it to another bus called solo bus. And this is a feature that's from more of a live mixing situation. Say you're recording somebody playing guitar or you know doing live sound rather for somebody, uh, a band, and you gotta mix out, oh man, the lows on that guitar are way too loud. So you would hit the solo bus, throw your headphones on, and in the headphones, listen to the guitar, make the adjustments, etc. So now that we have all these depressed, you might say, okay, well then let's just, I'm just gonna turn this back to the beginning so we don't run out of uh, song. Oops. And then, so you might say now, okay, we're still not hearing anything through the phones, even with the volume up. You, what's going on here? Well, so before you turn the phones up, you need to have this PFL AFL master knob turned up, similar to how this is working, right? All the audio is getting summed to um, this knob, essentially, for the solo bus. It's very similar to how the, the audio is getting summed to here. Instead of a fader, though, we have a knob. So you got to make sure that this is turned up. And now we can see that there's audio coming through the solo bus because, like I said, not to sound like a broken Model 12, but this need, these buttons, when they're depressed, the PFL light comes on, and then this meter is now for the solo bus. So now, let's see what happens when we turn this up. So, it might be kind of low, but that's coming through the headphones now. Oof. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Uh, it's not something very intuitive if you've never used mixers like this before or done audio in a live situation. I personally couldn't figure out for the life of me how it worked. It's taken me some time just kind of studying this unit to figure out how it works. I think this button would be better named like headphone or something different than a solo because it's confusing. If you've, like I said, never used this before, but also that's, uh, I guess, on the user a little bit. But the headphone usage is just not intuitive. Who would have known you'd have to bus it and then turn up a master fader and then turn up a separate phones knob? Hey guys, the camera cut out. Sorry about that. I was just saying the headphone situation of this unit is easily the biggest flaw. So if you couldn't figure out how to get the headphone signal going or even the main signal, it's not incredibly intuitive, so don't feel too bad. If you're able to get this far in the video with me, give yourself a pat on the back. You did a great job. And if you find the headphone situation to be really unbearable, I made a whole other video about using the sub output and a headphone amp like this uh, Behringer HA400 for the headphone signals. And this will also give you four separate outs if you're recording with your band or something. If you want to support more videos like this, check me out on Patreon, patreon.com slash 424 recording. And I want to thank all my patrons there who support the work I do at 424 recording. There's also affiliate links in the description. If any of this helped you out, if you want to support the channel at no cost to you, check those out. I'd appreciate it greatly. And I just want to say Godspeed to all my friends out there. Thanks to everybody who's been watching the channel over the past four years. We just rolled over 10,000 subscribers means a lot and it's a testament to doing something that you want to do today. So make sure you do something you want to do today. And remember all the things you do every day compounds into something greater than the sum of the day's work. Thanks guys.